So guys, here we go. Number one problem, me and Matt always hear from gym owners and we've had this ourselves, but we feel like we've got a system to make it flow is I need more leads. That's the number one problem we hear gym owners say. And then number two is I need more coaches. So today we're attacking problem number one and going all in on that. So this is the top of your funnel. You need leads to feed the whole business. All the other departments need leads. Without it, they all get choked out. And so that's why it's such a vital, important topic. And that's why I'm so excited to dive into this. So without further ado, Mr. Wilbur, take it away. All right. Thank you, Dustin. I always feel nervous going into these things because Dustin hypes them up and then I have to try to deliver uh, on that hype, uh, which is good. I'm going to share my screen real quick. And let me hit the present button. All right, everyone see my screen? Yep. Cool. Awesome. Thank you. All right. So obviously today it's about 10xing your marketing. If you guys were here last time I spoke, some of it will be a little bit similar because I think that's the foundational stuff that we need to talk about. Yeah, it's it. not just about how do we generate a lead and when we generate a lead, what do we do with them? There's a lot of stuff that goes into being able to 10X your marketing. And there's a lot of hidden things that are costing you and your business and making it hard for you to market if you're not doing these foundational things and then really diving deep into your messaging. So here's the stuff that we're going to cover today. Mindset first, having the right mindset around marketing and sales is absolutely critical. And oftentimes as fitness business owners or fitness professionals, we have a really bad relationship with sales and marketing because that is not why we got into this business. But if you don't change that mindset, all the other stuff that I'm going to teach you today is not going to help you. Um, how to win and lose as a local small business owner. There's some stuff I covered last time that if you're on the call, you can't hear it enough. Uh, and then if this is the first time you're hearing it, this is affecting your business more than you know dialing in your marketing message, how to write copy that converts. Because if you get leads and you get people on your email list, then you have all these things. But if you don't know how to write copy that converts, then it's virtually pointless. And if you can write copy that converts, then you can print money, which obviously is important. Um, how to get any point across through story, how to get your leads uh, year round by giving, uh, which is a great strategy, especially for people that have a bad stayed around selling and marketing. What if you can generate leads just by giving to your community? Um, how to generate an additional 10 to 20 trials a month without ads. Uh, why the traditional marketing model could be keeping you broke. There's a lot of business owners that are at break even or less than break even that if you implement some of the stuff I'm going to teach you today, you can actually turn your business into a profitable business by just changing how you onboard people, um, creating a high-end front-end offer. We'll talk about that a little bit. How do you actually strategize for a high-end offer? Because you can't sell a high-end offer via the telephone. You can't sell a high-end offer um, you know, traditionally off a click. So how do you actually do that? So we'll talk about that a little bit today. Leveraging your existing clients to help you maximize your marketing and magnify your marketing and, and make it so you don't have to spend so much money on your marketing. And then how to turn every lead into two. So that's kind of the, the big kind of promises that we're going to talk about today. Hopefully that interests everybody here. So who am I? I'm not going to go super deep. Last time I uh, was introduced to Dustin's audience, I kind of went into it a little bit, but I went from living in my grandma's basement, $100,000 in student loan debt to doing over $40 million in sales with our gyms. Uh, that was you know, over a 10-year period of time, but you don't sell $40 million of memberships unless you actually know how to market and sell, right? Um, one of our claims to fame is we've opened three locations with over three to 450 challengers on day one. So imagine opening your gym on day one with 300 to 450 challengers coming through your doors. That doesn't happen unless you understand sales and marketing and what you're actually selling. Because I didn't sell them a six-week challenge or an eight-week challenge or a 12-week challenge. I sold them a result. 
And all the stuff that I talk about today will lead to that. I know my demographic. I know what they want. I know their pain points. We have a solution for their pain points, but how are we communicating that is really, really important. And then the truth be told, I probably made more mistakes than everyone here combined. Uh, I know what not to do and I know what to do, thankfully, and I'm still always learning. I'm a student of the game. And uh, Andy Frasilla said that that greatness is chasing the best version of yourself, always chasing the next best version of yourself. And I want to be great. So I'm always chasing that next best version of myself and learning. And then when I learn and apply, make the mistakes, learn what to do. I love teaching everybody how to do that inside of their business. So before we get going, I want to make this a little bit interactive. I'm glad Dustin kind of opened with, hey, I'm going to monitor the chat box. So let's get that chat box going. I'm going to have you answer three questions. Please answer them. Don't be, don't be afraid to answer them. Um, in the chat box, let us know how much of your time in your business you spend on marketing. If you were to take the hours inside of your business right now, how many of those hours are spent on marketing? So let's just do it by a percentage. So 20%, 25%, 50%, how much of your time? So don't put the hours, but what percentage of your time is actually spent on marketing? Next, I want you to answer how big is your email list? So how many people are currently on your email list? And then how many trials a month are you getting in your business? So every month on average, don't inflate this. Don't do it on the, the best month. Everybody likes to put like their best. Let's say you ran this big promotion and you got 60 trials. Well, that tends to be people's answers. What about the months that you only get 10 or you get 15 on the other months? Average those out on average. How many trials a month? Are you getting inside of your business? And for me, a trial is not a lead. A trial is somebody that walks through your door, starts your program. You have the opportunity to sell them a, a membership. It can be a week free. It can be two weeks free. As long as they walk in your business and start your service, I would consider that a trial. Now, if you don't know these answers, that is, a, that is also a problem. But if you guys can put that in the chat box real quick. Um, we'll go through that here in just a second. Uh, while you guys are doing that, we do have a special offer for you. Um, again, this isn't meant to be a pitch fest. I'm going to provide a crap ton of value to you guys today and hopefully make it worth uh, 10x your time of what you've invested to be here today. So um, we are doing our fitness empire mentorship. You've probably heard about it a million times. There's some faces in here that are already in the group, which is awesome. Um, but I'm going to give you guys an ethical brag today. The first three people that sign up, you're going to get our domination workshop for free, which is this summer. I've charged as much as $5,000 for that. So you'll be hanging out in that beautiful building right there on the, on the top, top floor. Uh, the first two windows there, that is a big giant, uh, classroom where we'll be 60 to 70 of us learning together and us really teaching you the foundation of how to have a, a seven figure business, how we went and we did that in our location. So you'll hear from me and Dustin, you'll hear from my team. Uh, and we also will be bringing in special guests on certain topics that we know that will take your business to the next level. So if you sign up the first three that sign up today, you guys will be able to get that for free, uh, which I think is a, a massive value it's, is as valuable as the group is right. So with that, go to yourfitnessempire.com, get registered. We do have a 10X guarantee on the program. If in the first 30 days, you don't feel like you're going to get at least 10X the value, which is just $300 a month. So if you don't think you're going to get 10X that value, then ask for a refund and Dustin will be happy to, to give you a refund. I'm going to keep my money, but Dustin will give you a refund. <laughs> uh, that's just a joke. <laughs> Uh, kind of keeping it light here. So let's go back to the chat box real quick. I don't know where I can see a chat box. Dustin, will you load it up? Maybe give us some, uh, some yeah. answers here on those questions. Yeah. So marketing, uh, how many hours I see 5%, 15, 10%, 10 to 15%, 10 to 15, 10, 10, 10, uh, 30 from Jody, 15%, uh, in terms of, <clears throat> Email list, 1,800, 2,500, 2,000, 1,800, 3,000, 4,700. Those are the email lists. And then in terms of trials, 
Drop in more of those guys. I didn't get a lot of answers. 10 to 15, 10, 10, 30, 20 to 25. And then another one, 25. Cool. Um, if I were a betting person, I can't see who answered what, but if I were a betting person, the people that are spending more time on their marketing from a percentage standpoint, the people that have the bigger lists are also probably going to be the people that have the most amount of trials coming into their business on a regular basis. There is definitely a uh, correlation between those things. And that goes into the mindset needed to be successful in your fitness business. What you really want to be thinking about as your business, any business in the world, Jim Collins has done as one of the foremost biggest researchers in the world on successful businesses. And one of the biggest correlations that he sees is the companies that are successful really position themselves as sales and marketing companies. And you need to do the same. I know a lot of us didn't get in this business to be in the sales and marketing game, but you can't change and save people's lives if they're not doing your program, right? So what, what we take as a mindset is I tell our organization that we're a sales and marketing organization with a world-class product that delivers results. If you want to say it a different way, sales and marketing organization that transforms lives. Cause that's what we want to do. That's the ultimate goal is we want to transform lives. Some people say change lives. I say transform lives. And the reason is change is temporary. Anyone can change their life. Anyone can temporarily change a habit, but transformation that is, that is identity to change. That is who you become. That is permanent change. So that's why I always like to say transformation I actually changed my entire my business name to transform for a reason because we want people to transform. We don't want them to just change. So the best fitness business owners, anyone who's ever had a seven-figure business, typically starts with the right intentions. They want to help people. They got in this industry to make an impact on people's lives. And then they had to go and learn the marketing and sales game because they wanted to change people's lives. If you truly want to change people's lives, you have to learn how to market and sell. But most fitness business owners that I know that come into it with a truly, um, they really love working with people. They really want to help people. They have a negative connotation with marketing and sales. They have an aversion to it. They, and then they neglect it. You don't do anything you don't like. So if you don't like it, you will neglect it. But realize you're neglecting your community if you're not selling into marketing. And so my question to you is what's your state around your marketing and sales? Is it positive or negative? So your state, and this is something I talk about all the time because this is the game. Your state is the alignment of your thoughts, your beliefs, and your feelings around whatever it is. That state drives your actions, your actions drive your results. So if you have a negative state around sales and marketing, then that's going to lead to negative actions, which for most people is to just do nothing until the pain gets so high that they're willing to do it, which then obviously leads to negative results inside of your business. And for some people, that negative pain is like, I almost need to be out of business before I do that, or I might not make payroll this month or whatever it may be. I can't make my mortgage payment this month. I guess I better go and sell. And a lot of people wait until they're in severe pain to move. And you don't need to be. You should be in year-round sales mode. You should have year-round urgency about changing and transforming people's lives, which means you need to be in year-round marketing and selling mode. Period. End of story. That's what it takes. So what is your state around that? Until your state changes, though, a lot of this stuff just isn't going to work. Part of what's driving your state is how convicted are you about what you do? Are you convicted about that you get results? So if somebody were to walk in your business right now, do you feel like you truly can help them? Because unless you're a sociopath, which I don't think any of you are, if you try to sell something and market something that you don't actually feel will help somebody and that you don't think you can change their lives, then you will not be convicted about it and you will have a negative state about it. And what a big effect that people have is, especially if you're doing all the customer service, usually what happens is 
we are dealing with all the negative stuff inside of our business. People that aren't happy, people that aren't getting results, people that want to cancel, people that want to refund, people that want whatever it may be. And over time, that starts to add up. And then that is way higher than your conviction inside of what your product is. So you need to resell yourself on a daily basis about the impact that you have. And the problem is most clients will not tell you the impact that you have on people's lives. They, they just don't openly come and tell you. You can think about the 5% clients that are always grateful, always telling you the impact that you're having. Like that's a 5% client. Those, those aren't happening all the time. So you're getting bombarded with negative messaging about your product every single day. And does that make you go, you know what? I need to get out there and sell and market because I need to change more people's lives. It starts to make you question everything that you do. So you need to resell yourself and recreate your states around what you do and the product that, that you sell because you will only sell to the level that you're convicted. And then that goes down into your team. How convicted are they about what they do? Do they realize the purpose of the job that they have and the impact that they have and how important their job is? because they will only sell to the level of their conviction as well. And Dustin talks about this all the time is our coaches sell from their wallets. So their wallets, they would never pay a hundred dollars, $200, $300, $400 to get help with their health and fitness and get help with a nutrition plan and have somebody hold them accountable. Right. But our clients need it. So how convicted are you like, and then how convicted are they about selling? These things matter. It's not just about the tactics that I'm going to talk about. If the mindset's not right, the tactics will never work. And you'd be like, oh, the tactics didn't work. Was it the tactics or was it your mindset or was it the failed execution of the tactics because you had the wrong mindset? We already know so much of our clients' problems is their states around the things that we're asking them to do. What's their states around the workouts? What's their states around their nutrition? What's their states about making habit changes? Typically, they're all negative, and we need to change those states or we have no chance. I remember uh, Dustin did a workshop once, and he said this, and this has always stuck with me, and I always repeat it, is sales equals saving lives. And that's how you need to think of sales inside of your organization is that's how we save lives. If I do not sell, I do not save lives. If I do not sell, that means that I'm letting people walk out my door and be depressed, be overweight or obese, be on prescription drugs, set a bad example for their family. That's what we're allowing them to do if we don't sell. Now, 80% of the U.S. population doesn't have a gym membership. 80%. And I think a big reason why, one, most gyms don't do a really great job. Obviously, people have negative states around going to, to the gym. But I also feel like a lot of us aren't good at sales and marketing. If we were better at sales and marketing, there would be way, way more than 20% of the population that has a gym membership. And then the other sad fact of that is of that 20%, 67% don't use it. Our industry is broken, but in order to help people, we must sell them, right? In order to sell people, they must know who we are. They must know how we solve their problems, which we're going to talk about here in just a second. The next anchor that a lot of people don't think about is you are a small local business owner. If you listen to the last webinar I did, I talked about this a lot. I'm going to talk about it again because this is like the hidden thing that is hurting your marketing efforts. Because if you have a bad reputation, if you do not deliver a great product, or maybe people don't like you because of the things that you are doing, your marketing will not work. Your marketing will cost you 10 times more than it needs to cost you because of what your reputation is or what your messaging is. Everything that you talk about as a local small business owner, I mean, every like when you're talking to clients, when you're posting shit on social media, when you're writing emails, when you're doing anything, you need to look through the lens of how does this help my clients and how does this help my community and how does this help my team? That's it. It should always be about that. It should not be about anything else. Now, if you watch 
my social media, I've went away from that because I want to serve gym owners. I want to serve a bigger market, but you better believe that's actually hurting me in my local presence. But the reason I'm willing to do that is because I'm clear on my vision and where I want to go and the impact that I want to have on this world that I'm willing to have that. But I know I'm self-aware enough to know that if I talk about doing $40 million in sales, that does not sit well with my team. That does not sit well with my clients, but it attracts obviously business owners that want to have the same success as me, right? So you need to know what game that you're in. And a lot of people try to play the big social media influencer game and, and mimic their favorite social media influencers. But you need to realize that they're marketing to 8 billion people. And the majority of them are trying to market to entrepreneurs, not the local uh, mom who's 50 pounds overweight that wants to lose weight, right? That's a different audience. So a lot of us try to talk to our audience like we're these big influencers and talk about having success and what you need to do to have success. And all it's doing is turning off your local demographic um, and then really putting a spotlight on the stuff that you do as a small local business owner. So if you're renovating the gym, show it. If you're working long hours, show it. If you're making family sacrifices, show it. If you're doing something in the community, show it. If you're doing a workout at your gym, you should be highlighting it. And hey, this is us. I do the workouts here too. I believe in the workouts, so I do the workouts. Um, if you're having conversations with a client, use that content. And then highlight client wins as possible. And also highlight team member wins as possible. If a team member does something that's awesome or it's their anniversary, you should be acknowledging that. You should be cheerleading that because guess what? 16% of the population is an entrepreneur. That means 84% are employees. Guess what? Employees don't get at work. They don't get recognition. They don't get appreciation. They don't have their boss going on social media showing how freaking awesome that they are. Your brand and your reputation is what your clients and your marketplace think about you, believe about you, and feel about you. What is their states around you as the owner? So when you guys are doing anything, try to wrap it up back to how this is helping the clients, how this is helping your team, how this is helping your community. It's not about you. It's not about your business. It's not about your success. All the messaging needs to be towards that. There are a few people on social media right now that, that I follow and I'm like, you are hurting your local brand so much by how you're messaging things, but they are not aware of that. Um, they they want to look like they're so cool and they're so successful and they're doing so awesome. And this is what you should do to be successful. And most people are completely turned off by that message from a local audience. So know your audience. It's really critical. So some of the things that you'll see that large influencers do that captures attention and it definitely works, but it doesn't work as a local business owner because all you're doing is pissing people off. So when you tell people what to do, you should do this. You need to stop doing this. You need to quit doing this. This is how you think. This is what you should be doing. Like that messaging is not good. You need to know your audience. So instead, use client stories and situations to make the same point you're trying to make. At a minimum, if you want to use yourself as an example, then you can say, I have found or I've learned from making this mistake. And then this is what I did to fix it. And this is the, the result that I got. That's okay. But the majority of the time, we want to use client stories. And I'm going to show you guys how to do that today. But to dial in your marketing and message and make it as super as effective as possible, you need to know what your audience is. Who are you trying to serve? So are you, are you talking to males or females? Because you can't talk to both at the same time. Uh, what age demographic are you going after? What are the things that that age demographic actually values? What are the problems and issues that that age demographic has? And that's who you should be talking to. If you're trying to talk to everybody, you are talking to nobody. So you need to get hyper-specific on who's the audience that you're doing. A lot of us waste so much of our ad budget and our money because we are just the marketing message is off. 
We're trying to talk to everybody and you're just pissing money away. What's your niche? Again, you can't be everything to everybody. So what is your niche? Is it fat loss? Is it weight loss? Is it results? Is it getting people out of pain? I don't care what it is. You need to define the thing that you are going to be the best in the world at. This is the thing that you're going to be known at. And then ultimately, what problems do you solve? The problems that you should solve or the problems that your, your avatar client has? Because if you're solving problems that they don't have or they don't care about, then again, your marketing message is going to fail and it's not going to work. Some big things here. When you confuse, you lose. So keeping your message as simple as possible. And when you again, when you're trying to market to everybody, you're going to confuse people or they're going to think they're not talking to me. So I'm not going to listen. When my wife starts talking, I don't listen until she says my name. Like she'll be talking, but I don't think she's talking to me. I think she's talking to somebody else. Like we could be in the same room. And I'll just not be paying any attention to her. Sometimes our kid is in the room. I'm like, half the time, I think she's talking to him. And then she'd be like, Matt, or something like that, and grabs my attention. I'm, now I'm paying attention because I know she's talking to me. It's the same thing with the marketplace. Your message needs to speak to them directly. And a lot of us don't have that. Uh, when you try to serve everybody, you serve nobody. People's attention spans are three seconds or less. So again, if I don't think you're talking to me, I'm just going to completely tune out. So you got three seconds now to do that. And if you want to make money, you want to be a specialist and not a generalist. A lot of us think, well, if I'm a generalist and I help everybody, then I'll make more money because I can help more people. No, you'll just be more broke. So general doctors make, I think, like $125,000 a year is like their average salary as a general doctor. Specialist make at least $500,000 a year, right? You want to be a specialist in this industry and then be known for solving a specific problem and own that. The next thing is people don't really understand what is actually valuable to somebody. So when we're trying to create offers, when we're trying to create a message that gets people to move, a lot of us don't actually understand what is valuable to our clients. So it starts with, knowing what their problems are, what their issues are, what is the desired outcome that that person wants. So this is from Alex Hermosi's book, um, $100 million offers. And when you start writing your messaging, I want you to think about this. What is the dream outcome or desired outcome of that? How do we increase the perceived likelihood of achievement? Oftentimes, the way you do that is by sharing stories of somebody that is similar to you that got the same results. And I'll show you how to do that in a minute. And then how do we decrease the time it takes for that person to get the results? And then how do we decrease the effort and sacrifice required to get that result? A lot of us gym owners, when we start talking about the workouts and the barbells and the type of exercises that we're doing and the macros and the tracking your food and the fucking meal plans, and all that stuff and everything that you're going to have to do, guess what you're doing? You're increasing the perceived effort and sacrifice. You're increasing how long we think it's going to take. You're decreasing the perceived likelihood of achievement because they're going, I don't think I can do all that. That's a lot of stuff, right? So a lot of us, when we message incorrectly, we start decreasing the value of our program because we don't actually understand what delivers value to our clients. But I'm going to show you a very easy way to incorporate the value equation into your messaging. So I talked about this before, but you need three things when you're making any type of message. I don't care if it's a social media post. I don't care if it's an email. I don't care if it's a sales page. These are the three things that we need to be talking about. Client's biggest pain point or problems. That's all we should ever be talking about. What is the biggest pain points or the problems that our client demographic has? So my homework for you is go make a list of the top 10 issues and problems that our clients have. That if you could solve those issues and those problems, it would be highly valuable to that person. What is your unique solution? So in your gym, what is your process? What's your unique solution to solving these problems? And a lot of a struggle because we don't have a proven process to deliver results. So you do need to create your proven process of how do we take somebody from A to B every single time. And the thing that 
creating a proven process does is that it massively increases your conviction about what you do. Because if you don't really understand, I don't, clients just get results. I don't really know how we deliver those. How convicted are you going to be? And then how convicted are, are your teammates going to be? How convicted is the salesperson going to be? How convicted is the lead follow-up person going to be? If there is not a proven process that we know if you follow this process, you will get results. And then the, the last part of it is what is the desired outcome that your clients desire? So what is that dream outcome? So this is called a one-liner and a one-liner is it's problem, solution, and then outcome. Every single email should follow that type of sequence. Every single social media post, every single bullet point in a sales page should follow that process. And I'll give you plenty of examples today. And when you do that correctly, it creates value in the, the client's mind. The other thing with, with the um, understanding clients' pain points and their biggest problems that they face is if I can describe your problems better than you can, I have trust. And Dustin likes to say trust equals transactions, right? So with that, the better you understand your clients, the better you can speak to them, the more they're going to trust that you have the solution. And when they're in enough pain to take action, you're the first call, you're the first click on an email, you're who they're coming to. They're walking in your doors. Um, so again, this is all you should ever talk about inside of your marketing. We're going to keep going here. All right. Now what you're going to do is you're going to take those 10, 10 things, those 10 problems. I would, if you can get it down to five, that's even better. Those are going to be, and then you got your solution, your new unique solution that you have for your program. And then ultimately the desired outcome. When we solve that problem, this is the desired outcome that we get. Now you can start creating your emails and creating your content around those things using client stories. Now, when you think about your solution, what you really want to do is, if you can, be contrarian with your possible solution. So it's the opposite of what people think. It's the opposite of what social media is telling people to do. It's the opposite of what is mainstream. Your solution should try to be contrarian to what most people are providing, or it's the opposite of what all the other gyms do. All the other gyms do one size fits all. We do custom, right? So one size fits all is the reason why people are failing. At our gyms, we call it a custom fitness solution. So we provide a custom fitness solution. That's our silver bullet. That's the thing that um, gets clients results. The goal here is to give them an aha. The reason why you haven't been successful is because you haven't been doing this. You haven't tried it this way, which is why you haven't been successful. So when you're thinking about your solution, that's what you need to do. I wrote three different emails on three different things because my goal is that you can start writing three emails a week using this formula and start getting 10 to 20 trials a week just by writing to your email list three times a week in this structure. And it's a framework that I wish I had this framework 10 years ago. Um, I don't know about you guys, but when I go to write an email, somebody just wrote on my shit. I don't know how you do that, but um, I never had a framework of writing emails. I didn't really understand how to communicate and write emails correctly, which then made me not want to write emails. So when we talk about the three C's of actually getting to competence and actually like feeling like you're good at what you're doing and you're going to do it. You need confidence. Confidence leads to courage and the courage leads to competence. So if you're not confident in what you're doing, then you're not going to have the courage to go and execute against that. Right? So my goal right now is to give you the confidence to start writing three emails a week because you're going to see how simple this is. I wrote these emails in 10 minutes before this presentation. So I don't want you to think like this was like, I spent hours doing this. Like you probably could write better. My grammar isn't the greatest. It's okay. If you understand the framework, you can do this. The goal would be to use real client stories if possible, but you don't need to. So always start with what, what's the action that I want somebody to take. So everything should lead towards that action, which will make more sense here in a minute. But 
really like, what's the point I want to get across? And then what's the action that I want to take? So for example, let's talk about somebody that wants to lose their baby weight. So oftentimes, uh, especially if you're males, we'll write an email, top five ways to lose your baby weight or something like that. And you tell them what they need to do. They need to do this and do that, do like, and they're going to, and you're a male or maybe you're a young trainer and they're going to be like, you don't understand me. Like, screw you. Like, who are you to tell me how to lose my baby weight? That's what they're thinking. Instead, use a story about somebody who did something to, to lose their baby weight, right? So here's what it would look like. Why it took Susan 10 years to lose her baby weight? So, hey, name, obviously keep it friendly if you're able to use names, first names. I just finished an accountability meeting with one of our amazing clients, Susan. So part of this, uh, I want to reiterate, you want to make yourself the guide. The client's the hero. You're the guide. That's it. That's how you want to position it, okay? She is finally to her uh, pre-baby weight after 10 years of trying. When Susan first started with us, she had tried virtually everything, low-calorie diet, fad diets. She had tried count, counting calories. She even went to weight loss clinics. With some of the programs, she would have temporary success, but then gain the weight back. And in some instances, she ended up heavier than when she started. So I'm agitating the pain, right? This is the pain that this person's in. Obviously, there's going to be probably 20, 30, 40% of the people reading this that are going to resonate with this. I, I work with 40 plus. That means that people have kids. They're struggling to lose the baby weight. They're going to resonate with this story. They've tried to lose the weight. They haven't been able to lose the weight, right? So started with agitating the pain. What's the problem? She's tried to lose weight. She's tried all these things. They're not working, right? She, gained, she lost weight. She gained weight back. A lot of people can resonate with that. So problem. The first thing we did when starting to work with her is increase her food intake from, uh, to high, with high-quality foods. It should say with high-quality foods. This primed her metabolism, trained her body that it was safe to lose weight. So that's kind of like a contrarian type of statement. We made it so it was safe to lose weight. I don't give a shit what you guys think about that statement, but obviously somebody like, wait, what? I've never heard that before. Even though she was eating more food, she began losing weight in a sustainable way. And after 10 years of trying to lose weight the wrong way, she was able to take the weight off for good. If you are tired of trying to lose weight the wrong way and want expert help and guidance, we provide a free starting point session to discuss your goals, assess your needs and create a custom plan that's right for you. So that's our custom fitness solution that we provide. We only allow five point appointments a week and we already have three books. Click here to schedule your appointment. So our front end offer, we don't have a front end offer. We need to get people to sit down with us one-on-one -on -one and we either offer uh, straight to membership or an eight week transformation program at $800. I can't sell that via a click. I can't sell that any other way, right? So, but with that, this is a call to action. I gave them some tips. It's very subtle. Everybody likes a transformation. Everybody likes a story. It's not a hard sell, but I don't, I provide know-how, but I don't tell them how, right? So I give them just enough. Like we increase the person's food intake for the average person. They're like, I've been doing it wrong all my life. All I've done is slash calories and, and done too much cardio, right? Maybe I need to eat more food. So my body feels safe to lose the weight. Hopefully you guys can see like, the three parts in action, right? We had the problem, we had the solution, and then we had the outcome, and then we have a call to action, which was to get them to book a starting point session so we can help them do the exact same thing. All right, more examples. So I used a different example. Um, at our gym, we do three types of services that we can provide. We can do one-on-one, -on -one, we can do semi-private, and then we have group conditioning classes. So part of our demographic is an older demographic that wants personal training, that they want to get out of pain, they want longevity. So it was a little bit of a different demographic. So this is how you would address like the knee pain, which is very common uh, for clients in their 50s and 60s and in, in addressing some of their concerns. Hey, name, one of, my, one of the biggest problems we solve at Transform Fitness is helping people move better and get stronger to be able to keep up with the things that matter most in their life, which is a big worry of people in that demographic. They're afraid that their quality of life is going to go down. They're not going to be able to keep up with their grandkids. I just met with, with our client, Sue, who is 67 years young. And when she started Transform, she could barely walk up the stairs. The stairs would 
cause her extraordinary knee pain. You could put excruciating knee pain. Obviously, we're agitating pain. And she had fears of not being able to keep up with her grandkids, which is a fear that everybody has. In that age demographic, they want to be able to keep up. They want the quality of life. I'm proud to report uh, she can now go up the stairs without pain and keeping up with her grandkids isn't a problem. She is proud to be in the fit grandma's club. Who doesn't want to be in the fit grandma's club, right? Like no longer on the sidelines. You're the fit grandma. That is status. So one of the things that you want to think about is how do I help this person survive? And one of those things is giving that person status, increasing status. People make decisions based off status. So being in the fit grandma club is a status type of statement. One of the biggest things we did to help Sue was we assessed her body, how her body moved and created a custom plan just for her. She trained with our professional team three times a week. Cause guess what people in their sixties and fifties and seventies want, they want professionals that know how to help them. They don't want a young 20 year old that uh, just got their degree and, and doesn't understand them. Focusing on strength, strengthening the key muscles, not just strengthening her muscles or quad, the key muscles, uh, needed to eliminate her pain and get her strong enough to live life on her terms. If you'd like to live life on your terms, no matter your age, we would love to help. Every client at Transform starts with a complimentary starting point session to discuss your goals, assess your needs, and create a custom plan that's right for you. Book yours here. Blah, blah, blah. Um, so the next one, and the reason why in the bottom I put PS, you know someone uh, that could use our services, please forward this email. Some of our clients are 30, 40 years old and doesn't really, they don't fit in the criteria of this email, but they know somebody in their 50s, 60s, and 70s that is suffering from knee pain and different things. And it's encouraging them to pass this email along to them. That goes back to understanding your, your demographic, right? Uh, food as fuel. So if you were to tell somebody, hey, you just need to think of food as fuel, they're instantly going to say, screw you, dude. You don't know. You don't understand. You don't have my problems, right? So subject, the mind shift, uh, the mindset shift that finally helped Julie lose her unwanted weight. Hey, name, I was just talking with one of our clients, Julie, and I wanted to share with you about a mindset shift she made that helped her lose her unwanted weight. For years, Julie struggled with overeating and going on restrictive diets. This left her miserable and frustrated. When we met with her and customized her fitness, nutrition, and accountability plan, we showed her how she could work in her favorite foods. The big mindset shift she made was learning to use food as fuel and that losing weight didn't mean restriction and deprivation. Here's the really cool part. With, within two months of starting our program, she's down 15 pounds. She feels the best she's felt in years, and she feels like she can do this forever. How awesome is that? We are looking for five people who want to get results like Julie. If you are sick, and, uh, sick of restrictive diets and want a custom plan for you, we have a few openings next week. Click here to schedule a free starting point session. That's how you sell a starting point session and make it valuable because traditionally something like that is not valuable whatsoever because they don't think it solves their pain point. So if I were to just write an email about, hey, we have uh, five openings this week for a starting point session, click here to, to get one. No one's going to do that, right? That it's just not going to work. But you can insert this for anything, any program that you're trying to sell. If you have an ongoing trial throughout the, the year, uh, even if you're doing lots of promotional type of stuff to get people in traditional challenges, traditional LBOs, but you struggle to get leads in when you're not uh, selling those things, this is a way to get an extra five plus trials a week just by writing story-based emails about problems that clients have, how you uniquely solve them, and then the outcomes, the desired outcomes that they want. I'm going to stop for just a second is there any questions on how to write emails or any aha moments that you kind of had that maybe you're like, I feel confident to write these emails now. So I want you to feel confident. So if you have any questions on writing those emails, please let me know right now and then we'll answer those and then we'll move on. Anybody got questions on email marketing, writing emails? Coming up with a system that helps you to get in a groove because if I can, I know what it's like if you have zero, and then the math asking you to do three, how are you going to close that gap? Anybody need any help with designing that? Or are you guys good? 
Okay. Matt. We're good. Every, everyone has a profession. Maybe I did such a good job. No one has any questions. All right. Moving on. So write three a week. That is my goal for you. Just literally write down that framework. Problem, solution, outcome, call to action. That's it. That's here's all a, you need to do. Here's a question for you, Matt. Jody said, can you convince me that three is not too much? And does this go yeah. to everyone, your leads list? I'm assuming, yeah. This goes This goes to your entire list. So you're not going to burn out your... You're not going to burn out your community about clients getting results. So you can also use this for like tips. Maybe you have some tips that you want to provide your clients that week on a certain topic. Just use a client story and use those tips as the solution that you had with that, right? Three tips to lose 15 pounds in the next six weeks and make it about a client and the three things that they did to, to lose that, right? So no, you can't. You're not going to burn out. You're going to burn out your list with promotional emails about that provide no value that resonate nothing like in any shape or form with your clients, you will burn them out, but you want to be top of mind. So if we think about behavior change. So if we actually think about how people take action, so behavior is a combination of motivation, ability, and a prompt. So a lot of us with our marketing, we want to be prompting. So every email that you send is a prompt for somebody to take action. Now, if you write these correctly, guess what you're doing to their motivation levels? Jacking them up, right? And then you make it very easy for them to do business with you with a call to action. So if you're not communicating to your list or you're only communicating to your list like once a week, then you're only going to be able to communicate to them once a week and take action once a week. And you're not going to get consistent people coming through your doors. Now, if you write spammy emails, you're going to piss off your list. Does that feel spammy whatsoever? Like, I feel like it feels good, right? Like this is the problem that this person had. They were in lots of pain. It sucked. Everybody can resonate with it. Here's a few things that they did, which are pointers that help them. And then ultimately here's the outcome that they got. Everybody loves a story. Like everybody loves a story. So just tell stories and I don't think you can overdo it. So if you feel bad about three a week, do two a week. But at least twice a week, you need to be communicating to your list, even when there's not promotions going on. But you're going to find this type of email, even when you write promotional emails, is the type of email that you should be, you should be writing. It shouldn't just be buy my shit buy my shit, buy my shit, which is what most perfect, perfect example I'll share with you guys. Company just filed for bankruptcy. They're going out of business, Bed Bath & Beyond. They are now Bed Bath & Bankrupt. And I always was blown away by Mary Beth, my wife. She got messages from them daily with coupons and offers. And it was 15% off, 10% off. I was just like, how can you handle getting this many emails? And they're all pitches. There was no value. There was no tips. There was no, here. let me help you solve your problems. And so they gone. Uh, Matt, a couple more questions that came up. Can you repeat the outline? Problem, solution? Outcome. Outcome. And then call to action. You oh. don't have to have a call to You can have a softer call to action if you want. Like it could be like, hey, PS, we have three openings for whatever program that you're running right now. Uh, reply to this email if you're interested or click here if you're interested, right? So they're all they're a soft call to action, which doesn't piss people off too. But yeah, that is that is what it is. So problem. I like to start with like, hey, this was the person and this was the result that they got. Like, so it's not necessarily the the dream outcome, but it is a result that people want. So I try to hook them with that and then go straight into the problem. This was the backstory, right? This was the problem. Here's the situation. And then this is the solution that we provided to them, which you're just the guide, right? They're the hero, you're the guide. This is what we did with them. And then this was the dream outcome. So try to make that outcome as desirable as possible that they want, and then a, a soft call to action. And then always try, I have this at the end, but I think it's important to do is sometimes with, with call to actions or things that we do, we don't have any scarcity or urgency whatsoever. So the problem, the reason why traditional promotional marketing works is because you have built-in scarcity and urgency. When do like 50% of the people buy? The last two to three days of your program, you get a big rush of people signing up. We did 
uh, something called the Fit Body Games last year. And going into the last three days, we had 15 teams signed up. We had 67 total at the end. So in the last three days, we had over 40 teams sign up. Why? Scarcity, urgency. Scarcity wasn't there. So the different scarcity is like limited quantities. So if you look at my emails, I put, hey, we have three openings this week. That, that, is, that is scarcity, right? Um, and then urgency is like time frame. It's running out. It's getting shut down. We'll never offer this program ever again. That's, that's urgency. So when you're trying to make your offers too, even when you're doing a soft pitch, how can you have a little bit of scarcity and urgency inside of there and be able to mix it up without feeling like scammy? So a lot of people overuse it and they lie like way too much, but there is a way to use it even when you're making some soft pitches. Uh, and then, uh, Carl, I just got to you on the messenger. You, you said, are these emails to your local market? Yes, it's all just yep. you do collect it from local folks. And then Michael asks, if you don't have a specific person to write about, how would you alter those emails? How would you answer that, Matt? You make up a client, you make up an avatar. So go to your avatar. So let's just say you're dealing with uh, uh, women that are 40 plus, that are 20 plus pounds overweight. Uh, they've tried seven different diets, like, and they, they've tried everything and they're at wit's end, right? Um, that's your avatar. So write content around that person. So go into the psychology of that person. What are their struggles? What are their problems? What are their dream outcomes? What are they, you know, ultimately, what are they looking for? Once you do that, you can create stories and just pretend. People don't know Susan at your gym. People don't know Julie at your gym. People don't know Karen at your gym. They, they don't know that person. No one's going to be like, hey, who's Karen? Who's Susie? Who's Julie? Who's... So make it up. But if you've been in business long enough, you probably can think of past stories, past what problems that clients have had, past ways that you have helped them and, and solutions. It doesn't have to be, you know, today, right? I, I like to position it as like, hey, we just met and we just talked and this just happened and I want to share it with you. Like this was cool. So I want to share it with you kind of thing, right? Um, you can say, hey, a client just sent me an email. Uh, a client just sent me a message on Facebook. I just had a conversation with somebody. Hey, my team member just told me about an interaction with, with Julie and I want to share it with you, right? So there's plenty of ways to introduce that. Um, I think if you go into it of, I need to do this, you will come up with, with your stories. But it all starts with knowing your avatar, create a list of the top 10 things that they struggle with, right? And then use that framework and then just do some type of intro of like how did you learn this story and the outcome that, that they got, quick outcome, then go straight into the problem, go into your solution, and then go into your outcome and then call to action. Love it. And uh, final thing I think Matt does uh, is you, you, you might not feel comfortable putting an actual client's name, so you can just change their name. People do this with books all the time. You know, I was talking to my person named Joe, and it's like, that's not the name of the real person. So it's like, they have this amazing client story and her name's Susan, and you just change it to Jennifer in the email. The point is not who it is, it's the story and, the, and what they did to change their body that you want to share and kind of megaphone out to the world. So yep. that's that. All right, Matt, we'll let you keep cranking. Cool. That, that's, that's one of the, like, if you can master that, that will change your business for life. That is not a tactic. That is not a gimmick. That is not a, that is a long-term fitness empire building strategy that you can use for forever and print money if you do that correctly. Um, so if you got nothing else, that is, that is worth your, your time and energy for being here. That's at least thirty fifty thousand $50,000 worth of game. All right. Three types of media. So you have paid media when you pay to reach an audience. Um, example would be ads. That would be you going on social media and paying uh, Mark Zuckerberg money to be able to promote on his, his platforms own media. Uh, for me, that's really just our, our email list. That is, we own that list. We have the ability to communicate to them anytime that we please. And then earn media is when a third party spreads uh, your company brand or message. So if you go on TV and do an interview, whatever it may be, 
um, that is earned media. So the goal is to turn everything into owned media. When we think about creating our content and our strategy is how do we turn everything into owned media so that you pay once and then you have the ability to communicate to those people for life. That's, that's really the name of the game. And unfortunately, the game that most gym owners do is the paid media game. Every time I need something, I need somebody to buy my program, I got to go pay large amounts of money to Facebook and Instagram. And I need to come up with the, the shiniest, biggest, newest gimmick to, to be able to get that to be uh, affordable, to be able to do. We don't want to play that game. Like every big business, every big influencer that you know, every big coaching company that you know, knows that the name of the game is to get everything geared towards owned media. So really what I'm telling you guys you need to do is build your email list. Um, but most people are not actively building their email list um, or using their email list properly. I, I'm going to give you my entire strategy. So at the end here, I'm going to give you my entire strategy, my email strategy, my social media posting strategy, uh, text messaging strategy, everything you guys will have. So, but please still pay attention. So 50% of your sales should be coming from your current contact. So the way you drive down your, your acquisition costs when you promote something is by having your own owned media. If 100% of my sales had to come from Facebook and Instagram every time I wanted people to come through my doors, I would double, triple, quadruple the cost to get the same amount of people. So pay for people once and then drastically reduce your, your budget and how much you have to spend. All right, next, we're going to talk about sales pages. So if you are creating an offer, a lot of people's sales pages are confusing and they do not lead to sales because we're not messaging the right thing. So you need to be focusing on one thing. What's the one thing that you're selling? What is the one outcome that you're selling? What is the one type of person that you are speaking to? Again, if you're trying to speak to everyone, you're speaking to no one. So in that headline, we need to have the dream desired outcome. Obviously in the headline, if you can hit all the, the value points inside of there, that's great. Oftentimes that's not a hundred percent easy to do, but if you struggle with headlines, there is one book that you guys just go. These are the only seven pages that you need. Um, it's called copywriting secrets, um, pages 42 to 49. They have all the templates of writing headlines. So if you struggle to write headlines, you struggle to capture attention, just go plug and play those. And guess what? You know their problems. You know their desired outcomes. You know what they want. And now makes writing the headlines easy by using those plug and play headlines. Okay. Benefits. When you guys are writing the benefits, all the benefits should be in alignment with the outcome that you're promising in the headline. So many of us, we get to the benefits, the, the features and benefits statements, and they have nothing to do with the outcome that you're promising. All you're doing is confusing people. Um, and the way we're going to write headlines, I mean, write uh, benefit-rich statements is just using the one-liner formula, which I'll walk you guys through again. So the one-liner formula, now you can create benefit-rich statements. So for example, if you did unlimited 30-minute fat-burning workouts, that was like your headline of what you provide. Obviously, unlimited 30-minute fat-burning workouts if you're saying, hey, we get you results or we're going to help you lose 10 to 20 pounds in the next six weeks without uh, all this effort and all this energy, da, 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 that would be the headline. And now these, these benefits need to align with it. So a one-liner would look like the number one reason why people don't work out is because they don't have time. That is why X workouts are just 30 minutes so you can get results you're proud of without sacrificing the things that matter most to you. Are you sick and tired of long and boring workouts to deliver lackluster results? Our X workouts are scientifically designed to deliver twice the results in half the time so you can finally get the results you're proud of. That would be an example of a one-liner for, let's say your feature is a workout. Your feature is a 30-minute workout. Guess what? There is no value in a 30-minute workout. What is the problem that your 30 minute workout solves? What is the solution that it provides? And what is the outcome that that person gets 
because of your 30 minute workouts or your 45 minute workouts or your 60 minute workouts. So it's not about high intensity interval training. It's not about uh, strength training. It's not about uh, the, the type of conditioning you do with their barbells or the dumbbells or the kettlebells or the battle ropes. None of that shit matters. Guess what that sounds like? That sounds like pain. Guess what people don't want to buy? Pain. They want to get out of pain. A lot of us write things that we think are cool that are features for us coaches and trainers. And all the client does is associate that with pain. How do I get my results as fast as humanly possible because of what you're providing? Again, going back to that value equation. Accountability and support. Most programs fail you because they don't provide you the right type of accountability and support. So when we talked about the aha type of thing, right? So if you just provide accountability and support, guess what? So does everybody else. Like everyone else provides fitness. Everybody else provides nutrition. Everybody else provides accountability and support. At least they claim it, right? Everybody can claim whatever they want to claim. Everyone provides results, uh, even though most don't provide results at all. X gym, we provide science-based accountability so that this is the last time you have to start over again. Or you could say, so you never have to rely on willpower or motivation again. So the, the big thing, when you guys go to your outcome-based statement, just think which results in, and that needs to be the, the outcome, right? And obviously we want that outcome to be something that is desirable and wanted for that person. But all of these statements need to make sense. So the, the problem, the solution, and the, the outcome have to make sense in that one-liner statement. And they also have to align with the desired outcome that you pitched in your headline, or else people are going to be like, I'm confused. This doesn't make any sense. I'm out. Custom nutrition. Again, everyone provides custom nutrition. If you provide a one-size-fits-all meal plan, please never say you provide custom nutrition. That's just a pet peeve of mine. But most diets leave you confused, frustrated, and hungry. We put an end to all that with our X nutrition system, which makes it simple and easy to know exactly what and how much to eat to get results that will have your friends and family asking you, what are you doing? Again, I don't talk about macros. I don't talk about counting calories. I don't talk about my app. I don't talk about my technology. I don't talk about any of that stuff because none of that stuff matters. And all that sounds like is pain. It sounds like a lot of energy. It sounds like a lot of effort. It sounds like I don't know if I can do that. So let's eliminate all that stuff and, and write bullets and benefits that actually deliver results, which is them walking through the door. I already talked about that. Other applications, because sometimes seeing it in a different application brings it to life. So I have a nonprofit charity and we are getting no sponsors for anything right now. And the reason why we're getting no sponsors for anything right now is because we're asking them for money and giving them nothing in return. You as a local business, hey, sponsor this event. What's the first thing you think of? What's in it for me? What's the problem that I solve? So we are creating a new sponsorship program that's all about driving leads and people through local businesses. Uh, which, which charity does that? None of them. So here's... Here's what a one-liner would look like. Nothing is worse than donating to another sponsorship and getting nothing in return. With our Big Gift sponsorship program, 100% of your money goes back to promoting your business. This means you get to make a meaningful donation and get a return on your investment. So that's kind of like the, the, the call outs of when we're talking to business owners, like you would have my attention with that. And what we're doing is we're buying five, it's a $1,500 package. We're buying $500 of their service, their gift cards to their business. We're spending um, all but 250 of it on ads running people back to their business. So what we're doing is we're getting, we're doing a giveaway. So we're getting 20 businesses together. We're doing a massive giveaway. And then we're pulling all the money from these local businesses to drive ads to that for the giveaway. And then from there, um, we build our email list with their money, but we're driving all the traffic back to, to their local business. So they're actually getting a 10x return on their marketing ad spend than they would before because the number one pain point for a small local business is they don't have the revenue to be able to, to generate leads. Now they're going to be able to get 
a thousand times more impressions about their business by donating to our cause, which really isn't donating. But with that, we start building up relationships with local businesses who now become sponsors of our events because now we're providing value to them. So that's just a way to think about it. What problems do I solve? How do I do something different than everybody else? How do I be contrarian? What what charity is going to somebody and saying, hey, I'm going to take all your money and actually bring it back to you? None. But obviously, we have an end outcome that generates revenue for our cause. All right. Now we're going to talk about selling by giving. So we're going to go through this really quickly because we only got 22 more minutes. Grant Cardone said this. He famously said, if people don't know you, they can't flow you. Another way to think about it is if people don't know you, you can't help them, right? So a big part of the strategy is how do we get known? But it goes back to the first thing we talked about. What do we want to be known for? What's the problems that we solve as a local business? Because that's our brand. What is the problem that you solve is ultimately what people are going to associate your brand with. So our goal with this strategy is to take paid media and turn it into owned media and really be able to start positioning ourselves as giving to the community and an expert in our space. Who doesn't want to be positioned as that? So we're actually never selling in public. Imagine if you never had to create another sales funnel, another sales page, another 28 days for $28, another 21 days for $21, another low barrier offer. What if you could reach your goals and not have to do that? That's what we're talking about here. Um, I already talked about all these problems. Most people are not actively building their email list, uh, which means that you're missing out on a ton of sales because if you're doing it right, at least 50% of your sales should be coming from your email list. Um, oftentimes we only market when we're trying to sell something. So the only time that the marketplace sees us is when we are looking for, for clients. We end up looking really needy. We look really greedy. And who wants to do business with people that all they ever do is try to sell me. All they ever do is try to sell me. All they ever do is try to sell me, which is okay. And it works. Um, obviously how you position things does matter. So I'm not saying don't do that today, but I'm just saying that's how you start coming across. And the problem is when you've been in business for a long time, you start like, now we got to be even cheaper and now we got to be even cheaper. And now we got to come up with a new different gimmicky and shiny object and all that stuff. And uh, it starts getting tiring and it starts becoming less and less effective. And then when you try to do something that's more higher end, you end up hurting yourself. It's like the supplement companies that do a 20% off, 30% off, 40% off coupon every freaking week. And then they wonder why they can never sell their product at full price because you've trained the marketplace to wait for the, the cheap offer. So this is our process at our gym. So what you want to do with your marketing strategy is you want to reverse engineer your process at your gym. So everything should be able to lead to the first thing inside of your process, right? So ideal world is you don't have to change your process for your marketing strategy. Um, even if you're doing promotions and different things, you should try to keep the same type of strategy inside of your business. So our process, so this is our pro proven process. We start with a starting point session. From there, we do a custom fitness solution for that client and they either go direct to membership. Uh, and our minimum program price, I was waiting for that and I didn't get it before my meeting is 287. So the lowest price that somebody can pay us for a membership right now is $287. Guess what? You can't sell that off a click. Uh, and then we have an eight week transformation program uh, for $800 on the front end. So those are the two ways to get started with our business. I can't promote that in marketing. It's a higher end offer and that's how it needs to be treated. So how do we set up that we're getting starting point sessions? So we need people to come in and sit down with us one-on-one -on -one or else it's impossible to, to sell that high. You can sell direct to membership. Dustin's company sells direct to membership. So you can do it but you will be limited on how much of a price point that you're talking about at that point. Uh, we do a monthly accountability session with every client. So if a client wants help or they want a new plan, so every client has a goal and every client has a plan and we create those plans for them at our uh, accountability session. So we create a custom fitness plan. We create a custom nutrition plan. We create a custom accountability plan and a lifestyle plan for every single client 
Um, it's their obligation to come to us though. Um, and then we offer an accelerated results program, which allows us to uh, make more money off of every single clients. Um, so if clients want faster, quicker results, uh, they will pay for that with an accelerated results program. So that is our process. So what we want to do is we want to reverse engineer that. So this is our goals. We're not there yet, uh, but we're getting there. Um, 48 starting point sessions a month per location, 50% close rate, 20 transformation trials um, a month at $800. That's $16,000 on the front end. And then four pain and fulls a month. And then 2% attrition. So our attrition's already there. Um, but we are actively working this strategy to, to increase it. So we're moving more people into uh, roles to be able to follow up. So we hit these targets. So I already talked about the problem. So now that I know what I want, how do you get there? The, the problem for us is you can't sell a starting point session or direct a membership or an $800 front end program without sitting down with them one-on-one. -on -one. So that is the problem. So now we're going to reverse engineer that, but we're going to solve this problem by actually selling. So what we want to do is give in public, sell in private. And this is what all the online nutrition coaches do. So it's reverse engineering what all the online nutrition coaches do and applying it to your local business. So we want to give people valuable information. So think about either a giveaway or something that solves their problem that they think is going to be a solution. Uh oh, are you guys are you guys having Matt cut in and out too? Matt, your internet kind of start breaking up here. Okay, everyone's saying yes. So uh, we'll give it a sec to reestablish. Um, so while we're letting him get his internet dialed in, uh, what I wanted to point out, Matt's bringing up here, I call them value hooks. Different people call them different things. But basically, these PDFs are things that you give away to your market and you get crazy dirt lead cheaps. Um, dirt cheap leads. I said that backwards. Dirt. <laughs> so uh, essentially, one that is a, just works like gangbusters for me is anything that's speaking to fat loss, uh, you know, like a fat loss over 40 guide. Um, so that's something where you're very much targeting it to people over 40. And if it's your problem that you solve is fat loss, like you're attracting a very warm lead and it's gonna be very cheap because you're not asking them to join a trial or challenge. You're just saying, download my free PDF. So taking some time in Canva or heck, I mean, you can go to chat GPT these days and tell it to write you an ebook and then just move it into Canva and make it look nice. Boom, get it done. But it's just a matter of giving value on the front end and establishing authority like this is the authority in the local area when i want this done every business uh locally is known for the one thing you need a pool builder this is the authority everybody knows this person i need my my house clean this is the best cleaners in town you know i need my car wash you know this is the best car lot to go buy a car you want to be known as the best transformation center fat loss center and so, yes, it's a part of it is making sales, making offers, but another part is just giving out free, valuable content. And so as you listen to your client's problems, make that into a valuable hook that you can send out. And so a place you guys can kind of see it in the works is my Facebook group. I'm listening to the problems that gym owners have, and I make workshops and I make value hooks around that. So now turn that to clients. If they say, man, I really get that sweet tooth and I can't stop late night snacking how to stop late night snacking the guide and give them your best tips and push it out on paid advertising. This is how you get single digit cost per lead, like $3 to $6 cost per lead. And they're all locals. Cause again, you're putting your targeting five mile radius. You'll clean up, but where the next problem that comes in is you need to learn lead nurture them. Right? Like, so that's the, the big people uh, feedback people give is like well i did what you said i ran the guide i got flooded with leads I, I did one earlier this year we got 100 leads a week and no one's buying the leads are no good 
And going back to what Matt brought up earlier with the phrase that I always like to go back uh, to when people say that is trust equals transactions. Besides the free guide, what have you done to build trust and establish authority? And so have an automation or emails like what Matt was bringing up where they're showing, I transform person A, I transform person B, I transform person C, do you want to be D? Because I've done this a hundred times. And that's what they want. To, you want them to go through versus I have this challenge. I have this trial. Let's go. Let's go buy my stuff. It's not bad to put out offers, but your first put yourself and make yourself an authority, a celebrity. Um, so Matt's back. I'm going to throw back to him in a sec. Final thing I'll just put in your ear to chew on. Why do people trust The Rock, Denzel Washington, Tom Cruise, all these movie stars, right? You never met them. You never shook their hand. It's from their media. All we know them through is their media, their movies, what they put on social media. And people will say, oh, I love The Rock. I'm going to buy his stuff. Have you ever met him? Has he ever come to your house? Has he ever sent you a birthday gift? But that's the thing we have. We can write somebody a handwritten card. We do meet them. We do shake their hand. We do know their kids. We do get to see all these intimate things about them. But what we're missing is we're missing the media that makes you the superstar, that makes you the trusted authority. So that's why, again, putting out value hooks, getting on social media, being on their email, make them start to know you as like, oh, man, this is like basically manufactured celebrity status. Like maybe maybe the Hollywood gods didn't come and put you in a movie, but you're going to make yourself a local movie star known as the fat loss expert or the transformation expert by using social media, right? So that's kind of what I wanted to kind of chime in there with. But Matt, looks like you're back, dude. Um, you can continue on when you're ready. I had to run down the hallway and go do a different computer. I don't know what the heck was happening. Um, sorry about that. So obviously, Dustin uh, spotlighted me. I was like, what the heck's going on? Obviously, Dustin covered for me while I was gone. But um, I think you guys get the understanding of this. But really, the goal is to be able to go to the marketplace and give, give, give. The other benefit is, I um, heard Jason Capital say this. He said, if you were a plumber, who do you want calling you? And he said, you want the person that's got the poop coming out of the toilet right now. So when we're creating the guides, what we want to do is we want people raising their hands that say, I have a problem. Like I want to lose weight. And a lot of people associate losing weight with solving their problem, right? So creating guides that help people lose weight, that directly get people out of pain, because you can't create a guide that's like, uh, this is your pain, here's your guide, right? It's people associate the result with them getting out of pain. So you want to create the guide that gets a result that associated with getting them out of pain, if that makes sense. We'll go into more details on that in just a second. Um, Dustin talked about, it. I kind of heard the end of that, but generating leads is way cheaper than trying to get somebody to buy our program. But to Dustin's point is people don't have a lead nurture or a follow-up type of process of how do I now convert that person into a paying client? How do I get that person walking through my doors? And that's usually where, uh, the rubber meets the road, right? Um, the best part about generating leads is it is now owned media. So you pay for it one time. I can now text you. I can now email you. I can now basically do whatever the heck I want. And then if you were to ever want to sell your business, guess what's one of the most valuable assets in your business? Your email list. Like a business that generates $100,000 in cash and no email list versus a business that generates $100,000 in cash and has a 10,000 person email list is much different because I... I signed the agreement to sell two locations today. One of the values to that person was if they started over, they would have zero emails and they would need to pay 10 to $20 to get an email, right? So now the value of my email list is literally hundreds of thousands of dollars in value to that person. And these are the things that no one thinks about. One day you may want to sell your business. How do you make it as valuable as humanly possible? And one of the assets, because when you sell a business, you're actually selling assets. You're not selling anything else. You are selling assets of your business. And one of the biggest assets that you have is your, your membership, your email list, and all that stuff. It's super valuable. Um, anyways, the law of thirds. Another reason why you want to be able to create your email list is 
33% of buyers are ready to buy now. They're in enough pain that I'm ready to take action. All they need is the prompt. I'm ready to go. I want to lose weight. I've been thinking about losing weight. I'm now motivated enough. You made it simple for me to take action. I'm going to take action. 33% will buy in the next one to three months, especially if you do a good job of nurturing them, sending out the content that I just talked about. And then 33% really aren't ready to buy for 12 months or longer. But they're going to be getting your emails. They're going to be getting your content. They're going to be getting your your free stuff that you're providing. So when they are finally ready, when they are finally in enough pain, they're gonna be walking through your doors. So this is how it works. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna give you these guides or not. I'll talk to, to, uh, to Dustin after this, but this is an actual guide. This is the actual blueprint that I use for, for my company. Uh, so the first one to two months, uh, two weeks of the month, we do a giveaway. So the giveaways change. If you're doing a local giveaway, try, you have to mix it up. You can't just do the same shit over and over and over again. You can't just give away memberships. What you want to do is try to, to change it up. So uh, hottest restaurants in town, like what are high-end clothing stores? Uh, you can do supplement packages. Anytime you can do anything physical or combine those. The question that you have to go is what's the threshold that somebody is going to be willing to give me an email? What's the threshold someone's going to be willing to give me their phone number? Because they inherently know that when I do that, they're going to bug me, right? They're going to, they know that. So what is going to make it worth it? So we're rebranding our, our gyms and we're doing a, a big grand opening giveaway and we're doing $20,000 in giveaways. And part of the giveaway is uh, $500 to like the nicest steakhouse in town, $500 to Lululemon gift card, plus some memberships and, and a few other things. But having the physical, tangible things that are local that people want, I have seen uh, take the lead cost by at least half. So let's just say normally it costs you $5 to get a lead or $10 to get a lead. It's now going to cost you $5 a lead if you are working with uh, tangible type of gift cards that are local that people want. It definitely decreases the, the lead cost. So um, the first two weeks of the month, do a giveaway. The next two weeks in the month, that's when you'll do a weight loss guide with a, a desired outcome that you want. I would have the desired outcome align with a program that you offer. So if you offer a four-week program, have the outcome aligned with that. If you offer an eight-week program, have whatever it is aligned with that so that the solution that you have eventually when you start a conversation with that person aligns with the guy that you are offering them. So a bunch of examples, I'll get with Dustin and see if we want to provide this to you, but I have a list of like 30 to 40 examples of what you could do for a weight loss guide. And then a niche guide. This is something that we do because if you only have like one niche and you're just going after weight loss, maybe you don't need to do this. But for us, again, we have one-on-one, -on -one, we have semi-private and we a big part of our demographic is people in their 50s and 60s. So yes, we target weight loss, but we have the ability and the expertise to target people that are in their 50s and 60s. So if I just do a weight loss guide, I'm probably not going to get these people and they're probably not going to be in, like interested and they're probably not going to associate us with solving their pain points, right? So creating guides an example, fit over 50 guide, the five things you must do in your 50s, is stay in shape and be able to keep up in your 60s and, and et cetera, right? So, and then we go into pain stuff. So one of the things that we're going to be doing is working with a physical therapist that we have a relationship with, and we're going to have that person be the expert to create a guide on knee pain and create a guide on shoulder pain, and have a guide on low back pain, right? So being able to have experts, we also have a nutritionist on staff. So a lot of our guides will be like nutritionist type of uh, language, which then positions us as the expert as well. So when you got, I don't care what you're going after, you can create guides like this that are a free resource um, that start a conversation, or at least open the door to have a conversation. But the cool part is all these people are raising a hand and saying, I'm interested, I have pain. That's how you need to signify it. They are saying, I have poop coming out of my toilet and I need help. Who do you want to talk to? You want to talk to with people that have a problem. They are raising their hand and saying that they are having a problem. So 90% of our budget is, is on this. So on our giveaways, on the weight loss guides, on the niche. So we're not spending money on 
buyer program, buyer program, buyer program. Because once, once we have you in, we have a process to get them into starting point sessions. And then 10% of our budget is general awareness ads, which are really just our client hero videos and branding videos that position us in, in a really good light. That, that's it. Uh, you can also retarget them as well uh, with whatever offer you have at that time if you have an offer. Uh, but now they're a warm audience instead of a cold audience. So for us, instead of creating sales pages and new offers and new stuff, all we do is create these different things. So every month we got to come up with a new giveaway, which is honestly fun. I know Dustin likes it. I like it. You get to use your creativity and imagination and, and do some stuff. It also allows you to network with your local community and give back to your local community. Um, and then you can change your, up your offer based on the season. A few other things that we do for giveaways is if we are promoting a challenge or something of that nature, you can give that away. You can do membership giveaways. You can just get super creative with what, with what you're offering. Uh, one that we did that absolutely crushed it, that got us $2 leads, was we did a membership giveaway plus a Dick's Sporting Goods gift, gift card. I think it was like 500 bucks. And this was across all our locations. So don't feel like you got to do 500 bucks. And then we did a $500 supplement package. So we had some physical products inside of there that can, people can win. So local restaurants or clothing and physical products, home runs. And then we got to create a weight loss guide. Like if you are a fitness expert that truly helps people and you can't create a guide, like it can just be simple tips of how to lose weight, then you might want to reconsider what business that, that you're actually in. And then the niche guide. So part of the niche guide is we're going to be farming out a lot of local experts to create the content for us so that we don't have to do that. So if you get creative and you go, I have to create these three things or these two things, you will find a way to do that. So here's what the social media content uh, schedule looks like for us. So uh, beginning of the month, if you guys want to just screenshot this, because I don't really have time to walk through every single aspect of it, but beginning of the month, we'll announce our giveaway. Uh, we have a who we are video that we're going to replay uh, over and over and over again, because you can't replay that because most people don't see your stuff. Uh, every month we do a full length um, client hero video. So again, trying to make the client the hero, and then we repurpose it multiple times over. Five-star review. So uh, every time you have five-star reviews, Dustin does a great job with this. His graphics are really cool. Like you can post that on your social media. We haven't done this yet because we just started a few weeks ago with our eight-week transformation programs um, as a upfront offer. So once people get through that and have really good results, we'll post that on social media. Client Hero Spotlight is a written example of the full-length Client Hero video. And then that's what our social media looks like. You can see this, take a picture of it. But most people, you're not going to sell anything really by posting on your social media pages because like no one sees it. There's no engagement, no one sees it. But what do people do when they look at a program? They go check out your social media, they go look at your pages, they go check out who you are and what you're about. So what do you want to be front facing? Your clients being the hero and them getting results and that you're giving stuff away, not buy my shit, buy my shit, buy my shit, buy my shit. They're going to be turned off by that, right? So I really want you to think about like your social media content as highlighting your client's success, maybe highlighting what you're doing inside of your community. If you got client milestones, great, good place to do referrals. Um, but people are just going to go back there to confirm like, hey, this place is who I think they are. And you really want to build that trust factor by your clients saying how awesome that you are as a company. This is our story strategy. Again, everything needs to lead back to the client being the hero um, and, and understanding that we're a local business and then having a call to action every single day. Email content strategy. So we put the giveaways in the email content strategy. We have the client stories in there and then that's, that's about it. So the call to actions will change. So sometimes call to actions are starting point sessions. Sometimes the call to action is them downloading the, the new guide for the month. Uh, sometimes the call to actions like, hey, giveaway is going away, click here. So creating different urgency points. And the reason why we have multiple giveaway types of things is we have multiple points to create scarcity and urgency to get people to take action 
on the resources that we have. And then this is the monthly text campaign. You do not want to text people all the time because that will piss them off. No one likes to be slammed via text. You need to be very protective of slamming people's texts. So uh, just a few texts a month, but they're all like, they're all value adds to the client that we're doing. But the next strategy, the reason we do that will make sense with the next strategy. So all of this was designed to reverse engineer our goal as a company. Now you can use this strategy to sell your promotions. You can use this strategy to sell your programs. You just change out your, your call to action and that's all you need to do. So what we do from here, the goal with a lot of our giveaways is to mirror what influencers do online. So the selling behind the scenes uh, is to start a conversation with them and then really agitate their pain, get them in on your program. I have a lead conversion strategy. Unfortunately, this is all going to be for the mentorship team. I, I don't like to tease and then not provide, but this will be for the people inside of our mentorship. They'll be able to get this guide of exactly what do those conversations look like? How do we walk them through that process? And then how do we actually get them started on a starting point session? Last couple of things, thinking about through your client's journey. This is the client's journey. People sign up because they're in pain. Now they will buy a result because they think it's going to get them out of pain. And then eventually our goal is to lead that to a lifestyle client. All of us want a lifestyle client, but the problem is the price, the value associated with lifestyle is really low. The value associated with getting out of pain is really high. And that person has a ton of urgency to get out of pain. So just think of this cycle. This is the value from a client's perspective. Not from the gym's perspective, not what you want it to be, but from the client's perspective. They will pay almost anything to get out of pain. I, uh, I have neck pain. I injured my neck doing a bench press, but I actually have issues with my neck from being on my phone way too much. That's the actual root cause of it. I just ended up hurting it bench pressing. So I paid $2,500 to get traction on my neck. I pay $55 a week to get an adjustment every single week. And I will, if they said it was going to be a hundred bucks and it'd get me out of pain, I would pay it. Right. And it's not just because I have money. I sit in the chiropractor's office all day long and I can't believe the type of clients that they have that are paying them $55 a week for an adjustment. No problem. Paying for a fucking massage and some other shit. I'm like, what? These would be the same people that would be like, ah, it's way too expensive for a gym membership. Right. And I'm like, what's the difference? It's getting them out of pain. Right. So it's worth it to them. They have value inside of that. Now, if the chiropractor said, hey, pay me 10 grand and I'll get you out of pain right now or pay me three grand and it will take 18, 18 weeks. They would come up with the 10 grand right now because they could get that quick, right? Because they value that. This is the normal client journey. But the way we do things traditionally in marketing, and I talked about this last time, is when people are in the most amount of pain, we charge them the least amount of money. And then we try to charge them more to get a result or be on a lifestyle type of pro program. You really want to mirror the actual journey that clients are on. When they're in the most amount of pain, you should be charging them the most amount of money. And then as they go down the cycle, you should charge them less money because now it's in line with what they feel is actually valuable to them as a consumer. So this is our model. I kind of already talked about it. Acquire leads for cheap, high-end, front-end sale. Try to ascend them into a higher level training program. So for us, we can take them all the way up to over $1,000 a month, one-on-one -on -one training package, and then accelerate the results. So if they want more results, they want more attention, they want more everything, they can pay for it, and then close the back door, meaning like, how do you get people to stop canceling? That's, that's the name of the game. So if we look on the right here of the traditional cash conversion cycle of people, Traditionally, what a gym does is a low barrier offer, super cheap, super short duration. It's either free or it needs to be less than $97 to be able to get somebody to actually take action on it and uh, take a click from a, a sales page. Anything above 100, like up front, typically you're going to need to get on a, at least a phone call to be able to get them to sell that. Um, and then obviously they stay on. 
The average duration here is just them staying on for 10 months, which is actually pretty good for a gym. So their total LTV is about 1600 bucks. Now, if they do a challenge, their LTV will be a little bit higher because they're, they're paying a little bit more on the front end. And then online coaches, they sell $2,000 to $3,000 packages on the front end for 12 months. But their problem is their back end sucks because that person's no longer in pain, but yet they're trying to sell them pain level price points, which doesn't really work very well. The perfect model is how do we get upfront sales and then have ongoing membership sales that is affordable for them. And then that increases the LTV. So just us selling an $800 package on the front end compared to a gym that sells $150 membership, we're able to get 5.33 months of revenue from what most people would get from a membership on the front end. So if we think about like cash conversion cycle, do you want to get paid more up front or like take forever to get paid? Most people take forever to get paid. What if you could get both? What if you could get paid up front and get paid ongoing and then have the ways to increase the lifetime value from the customer? That's really the, the perfect model. So if you just look at, if you were to increase your front end offer compared to, to the normal uh, way that people do it, assuming people stay the same amount of time, you would actually be increasing your revenue by 43.7%. Right. And that's like on the low end of what you could do. Just that one thing alone. But you have to change how you get those people in. You can't just do the traditional uh, model that, that everybody has been taught. So a few bonus tips. Anytime you want to sell, you need to re-agitate pain. You need to bring them back to the pain cycle. A lot of us agitate the pain, get them signed up. And then we wonder why people don't take us on our new challenge or our new uh, we want to get them on supplements or we want them to ascend into a higher level training program. You have to go back and re-agitate the pain in order for you to sell them on what you want to sell them. So just remember that you always have to re-agitate your pain, especially your current members. you got to go back and a lot of us don't like doing that, but that's also why you're not ascending and selling more to those, those customers. Uh, make it easy for people to take action. It drives me nuts. So many of us make people have to burn energy to try to get them to do what we want them to do. So if you want them to share a link, give them the fucking link you want them to share. If you want them to share a page, give them the link. If you want them to send something for you, give them the thing that you want them to send. Do not make them burn any level of energy uh, to do what you want them to do. Leverage your clients. So if you're doing a giveaway, if you're promoting a challenge, whatever it may be, Make your clients aware and then make them aware of how they can support you, but there's got to be something in it for them. So if you want them to share the links or promote it, say everyone who shares the links can be entered to win a free membership or everyone who enters the is going to get a supplement package or everybody who does this is going to get X, Y, and Z. Every person you refer, you're going to get something in return. Get creative, change it up. But every time you do something, you want your clients to get behind it. So you have two to 300 people now sharing your message, make, make it easy for them to do, and then give them an incentive to be able to do that. Never ask your clients to do something for free. There's always got to be something in it for them or else they will never take action. But that is the easiest way to get your lead cost down. In the middle of a promotion, do some type of uh, referral campaign. Friends and family week always works good. Two times a year, we used to do friends and family week in the middle of a big challenge because that's when clients are, challengers are the most excited, right? They're the most hyped up. They're the most likely to refer friends and family to come in and try it. And then you should always have a way to turn one into two. So whether you just sold a trial, have a way to be able to have an offer that has them invite their friends and family in on a free offer, or be able to discount or give their promotion for free if they give you a list of names of people that. Obviously, you can then lead follow up with. One thing that we do is we discount the eight week trial if they give us three names of friends or family or coworkers that they think would be a great fit for a program. We discount our eight week program um, for that, right? Because it's valuable to us because we know that we're going to convert at least one of those three people into a new 800. And then that cycle just repeats itself. So have ways, and every business is different. So think creatively. I know Dustin have some creative ways to do this as well, but 
every time somebody comes in, how do I turn one into two? So after I sell that person, don't try to do it before you sell them. Once you sell them, whether that's a trial program or they've come on board with your membership, how do you then turn that into leads or referrals? And then that is going to continue to repeat itself and, and drastically reduce how much it costs for you to acquire a customer. And then make a big deal out of referrals. What gets recognized gets repeated. So make a big deal out of rewarding referrals. Make them feel like rock stars for referring people. Like try to find ways to recognize them in public for referrals and show them appreciation in front of everybody else. I don't do this anymore, but if I had one business, I would go back to this as we used to give cash. It was $50 cash to every person that referred somebody. Now, every month we would put up the referral board at the end of the month and say, thank you to all the people that referred their friends and family. We'd put their name, how many people they referred and how much money that we're giving them. It also served two purposes. It was now I knew who I needed to give money to. So then we'd have to go to the bank, get this money. And then at the end of the session, I would run and grab the money. And then I would thank that person publicly in front of the entire group. Like, I want to give a big shout out to so-and-so for referring their friends. Here's $50. Thank you so much. We really appreciate it, right? Like, who doesn't want to get money in front of everybody else? So we gave that person status. We gave that person recognition in front of the group. That goes a long way. And then I would take a picture of that person. I'd post it in social media. And then I would also put it in an email blast, thanking those people for referring their friends and family to our business. I don't do that anymore. I should do that still. I don't because it's just, it's a lot to ask of our team over as many locations as we do. But your greatest advantage is a small local business. Do those things. It will pay off. Always find ways to have scarcity and urgency. I already talked about this a little bit. I want to show you how I used it in negotiation. So when you're in sales, you need to do that. So I just sold two of our locations. The paperwork gets finalized today. I get a, a wire transfer of money at three o'clock today. Hopefully there's not shit burning down behind the scenes right now. Now, uh, two, two of our clients were interested in buying the location. They were pre-qualified, all that stuff. And I needed to create scarcity and urgency with them. So I basically, the way I did that, I said, we have two weeks to create an agreement of, upon agreement on the purchase price or else I'm going to open it up to all our clients to purchase the locations. And at that point, it is going to be, you know, a bidding war on buying the location. So I created a urgency and scarcity for that person to move and get the deal done. Because I told them, if you were to sell a house, do you want to sell the house to the first person interested? Or do you want to put it on the MLS and have as many buyers as humanly possible? You want to have as many buyers as humanly possible. So I was like, I think you'll be a great fit. I think this will like be a great situation, but we got two weeks to come to an agreement. The level of urgency that they had, and uh, they gave me a lowball offer, and then I got two and a half times more the second time around. But a big part of the reason why is because there was scarcity and urgency to get the deal, and they wanted it. And guess what? They had motivation to buy it, and I knew they had motivation to buy it. I just needed to put their feet to the fire for them to take action. So it works in all circumstances and you need to have them all your marketing. So I am done talking. If you guys have questions, I will stick around and I will answer those. But if you want a PhD in running a fitness business, the first three to sign up today are going to get the domination workshop for free. And we do have a 10 X guarantee for, for all of you. I already stated it, but I want to restate it. If you sign up for the program, it's just 300 bucks a month. And in the first month, you feel like you're not going to get at least 10 X of what you're paying, then just ask for a refund and Dustin will refund you. Go to yourfitnessempire.com, sign up. Uh, now there is urgency to sign up. There's not scarcity to sign up in the sense of, uh, of like, hey, there's only select spots for it, but there is urgency because we're closing it next week. And then we're not gonna open it up for five to six months. So if you want in on the group, you want things like this, we're gonna go super tactical. We're gonna help you implement all of these things inside of your business. Me and Dustin have 30 years of experience. Any problem that you're facing in your business, I guarantee you, we faced it. We know how to help you with it. And then the group already is freaking awesome, but we do want to get that group bigger. 
We want as many people, as many empire builders as possible inside of that group. So if you got value in this and you think that me and Dustin can help you, uh, go and sign up for that group. And we would love to be able to help you over the next 12 months, really grow and scale your business and uh, create your fitness empire. So I'm done talking. Is there any questions I can answer? Yes, let's open it up to marketing questions. Who has specific marketing questions that we can help you guys with? We're good. Anybody have questions about the mentorship? Obviously, this is a great time. We got me and Matt right here to answer those questions for you. Who's it for? Is it right for you? What are you going to learn? Anybody got any questions around that? Sales question from Michael. Go for it, man. We'll take it. <clears throat> Do you want to unmute and just share it with us, dude? Or do you want to type it in? Your choice. Sure. Um, so basically, sales over the phone, no good anymore. They, you, you should you should do um, you should set up appointments instead of no, um, no, that's not what I'm saying. I'll let you finish, but that's not what I'm saying. You can sell over the phone. It, there's a price limit to selling over the phone, though. Oh, okay. Like there. I would say, Dustin, you you guys do this all the time. What would you say would be like a price limit for? It, it's probably in the neighborhood of two to three hundred bucks. Once it gets into that, you know, above above that, when people are saying, "I want five hundred dollars for my six week challenge," or "I want to get someone directly to membership," but now we got to talk about a twelve month commitment. That's probably about the breaking point where people you're going to start getting a lot more no's. Okay. Yeah, anything above that, a minimum would need to be like a Zoom consultation or best is getting them in the location because you know they're serious you can agitate the most amount of pain inside of that person right where on the phone it's really hard to agitate enough pain to get the to overcome that barrier of resistance because the trust factor also isn't there over the phone like you, right you get massive trust factor either zoom you can do that because uh online influencers online coaches sell two to three hundred thousand dollar packages be a zoom all the time right so you can do that but also they're coming like super uh high quality leads that have massive pain point also you probably establish some level of authority and they know that you can already help them right so there's some some advantages of that but absolutely you can sell over the phone it, there's just going to be restrictions on how high of a package you can sell okay cool yeah, and then I think that's one thing that works against you being a brick and mortar is that because they know that, they use that as an out to buy over the phone. Like, let me just come down there. Let me just talk to someone. Let me see it. But it was like, what if I was a nutrition coach? There's no way. Like, I'm all, I'm I'm in another state. Like, how are you going to use that? You know, or I'm Slack or I'm Zoom or I'm all these other online services, but most of them are not charging this price point to people. And so sometimes they're like before i hand over this amount of money i need to know like and trust the environment and like what they're really saying in my opinion is i want to make sure there's people like me there like is this a gym where there's a bunch of shirtless guys clanging and banging weights and i'm the only four-year-old person immediately where the comfort is when they walk in and there's people similar avatar to them and they're like okay this is where we us hang out now i can talk to somebody make a buying decision but they don't know what it's like till they come down and that's where again the power of media make a video take a video of your session show all these women if again that's your avatar transforming send that to them in the nurturing sequence and make them see this is where these people come to hang out this isn't where the shirtless guys with six packs are working out so yeah thanks because yeah. the other thing that you have to overcome is like they're going to be very risk adverse with a gym they've tried other gyms it hasn't worked right where honestly, online programs, that's actually novelty for a lot of them and they, they haven't tried it yet. Um, so there's, there's, but there's great advantage of being in a local gym because you can actually meet with people face to face. What I would recommend is not trying to go straight to like a high ticket offer. I would try to take what I just talk, talked about with my strategies and improve what you're currently doing and then look to, um, you know, start implementing what I talked about with a more of a high ticket offer on the front end when you're ready. So what you don't want to do is like kill all your sales and kill all your processes and, and all that stuff. Take what I currently just talked about, increase what you're currently doing, like improve it. And then you can slowly start um, moving into a high ticket offer because that also 
it might be a system process change. It might be you need to get better at sales as well. Uh, so there's some things that you have to be improving upon before you can go do that high ticket offer. Cool. Great question. Any other questions you guys want to touch on or regarding marketing, getting leads? We're good. All right. Well, we'll let you guys get out of here. Matt, thank you as always bringing the power, lots of good, valuable content. Um, send you guys in the replay so you can go back and digest that. And there was a lot of content to take in. But that is the new way that we want to point to you guys to do marketing uh, as we move into 2023. Give value, get those low cost leads, and then find out how you can solve their pain on the front end with the best program. Don't give away the house for cheap when they're in the highest pain. And then you can downsell the continuity after that. Um, that's coming, Joe. Don't worry, man. We're, we're, we're going to be coming. We're going to be bringing that for you very soon. Um, all right, guys, we'll let you go. Thank you. Have a great day. Have a great weekend. Talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye.